If it's meant to happen, it will happen. My dad's Jamaican, my mum's English. <laughs> That's an outtake moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I like that. <laughs> I'm Elliot and I'm Reese. We are founders of Swag London Clothing. I don't know that. That's really good. Um, Ghana and Jamaica, and um, brought up in London, South London. To be and specific. for me, both my parents are from Jamaica, and I was born in England, London. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm six. Uh, I studied business BTEC at Coulson College. And university, I started studying business management. Um, I did A levels at Merton College. I think it's called South Thames now. But I did ICT, media, and business. Yeah, and then at university, I did market. Um, for me personally, it's just friends and family and situations. So just seeing my friends do well or. If they're at a particular point in their life and I know they want to do something, we'll just work together. That kind of what inspires me and motivates me from day to day. Yeah. Yeah, and for me, what really motivates me um, from day to day is just knowing that you can have a simple concept and the fact that knowing that if you stick at it, it will grow eventually. Um, just seeing the progression of where we started to now always keeps me going, always keeps me pushing to want more and what we can create. So that's what really motivates me, just to grow free. That was a sick answer. Originally, it was called Swagger Boy Clothing. I was only, how old was I? About 14, 14, 15. So my mindset was different at the time. Um, when I got into college, around the times when I was finishing it, um, we decided to shorten the name to Swag London. Um, yeah, that's kind of where the name, I can't remember the rest of the question, but... But, yeah, that, was that's that it. it. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. Uh, because of, like, what I was interested in from, like, school and stuff, it was a lot of graphic design, so I was making MySpace layouts, Bebo skins, Pixo, I don't even know if they're layouts, but, yeah. <laughs> but from then, I've been, like, designing things, so it kind of, I thought, let me start putting my designs on T-shirts just to see how things would go and that's kind of where it kick-started for me. What made me um, take the brand more serious because I wasn't, I didn't really originally found the brand, um, I was originally started it, um, but I came across, the, I was already buying selling clothes already and a lot of people that, well my customers at the time was asking me for something that was UK based, so I kind of told them that I'll be looking for something UK based, something that represents London and nothing was really out there so I didn't really look and then one day I kind of came across the brand on um, Blackberry Messenger so I saw this hat on the, the Blackberry Messenger and I was like you know what this looks alright can you put me in contact with the person who brand it is which was Els and then from there I bought a couple hats over him I started buying like 20 hats at the start they went from 30 and I used to sell 20 to 30 hats a week and actually saw the, the big vision in the company and I thought you know what make a lot of money here but also I can actually help him build his business so my initial effort my, my initial vision was just to help him like build it and what I used to do when I used to book an artist for an event I used to get them to actually wear the clothing and I really um, shared the vision with them and they really saw it so um, I've got Cashtastic to wear it, um, Young and to wear the brand, Abel Miller, um, Laveau London and various other artists and they really saw the vision in it and for me you know, I just actually saw something the bigger picture of it um, and then from there I just pursued it um, went to central London networked with a uh, event organizer so mad sick of it um, he helped me a lot build the foundation of Swag London and then five years on today I'm here um, with else so yeah that's really it probably uh, two brands for me is um, Nike and Adidas just reading like their story and doing the case studies for like university assignments and whatnot like, they've done a lot over the years like a hell of a lot so that's me personally so that's the brand and for me in terms of people that's inspired me um i would say richard branson um just, just the fact that um he never gave up on his vision 
um, always was put down, people didn't believe in what he was believe, um, building and when I was initially building this like this business, a lot of people said Swag London, haha, it wouldn't work, uh, what's that? And today like we're, we're actually killing the market and we, we haven't even done at least 5% of what we can do. So he's someone that actually um, inspires me um, just to get out there and do what you need to do and just don't be, don't be scared, be fearless, life's too short. Mm. Who did we decide on the other day? We had this conversation. We did, but I can't remember what we decided. All right. There's see. like a list of people. Yeah, know, there's, there's a range. There's a oh, no, yeah. So years, but. like from Palace, Puma, Nike, Adidas, like what they put together for their pieces this year that I've seen have been sick, especially since Rihanna started working at Puma as well, especially. Um, yeah, I think those are the ones we want to collaborate with. I don't know in what order, but definitely don't. Yeah, if one came, we wouldn't say no. Yeah, we wouldn't say no. Just walking around and just life. Yeah. Like, I can't, there's no one specific... There's no formula for Train it. for, like, train of thought to what I designed. Like, yeah. I made that, like, two years ago, but I decided to put it out a month ago. Put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. There's, like, London's a fashionable place and it's always constantly changing. Um, just, you really just got, got to keep your eye open and see what's trending at the time. Yeah. See where you can fit in and uh, collaborate with whatever. Man. Yeah. It's just with us how we are personally. Just consistently. Yeah, consistency, hard Releasing work. clothes. Yeah. Constantly being in the public eye. Like um, um, a lot of the music that is out there right now, we try to be in most of the videos just to make sure that we're always current and you know music never dies. So as long as you're your brand's attached to what's relevant, you'll always be relevant. So yeah. That was, I think that's just really it. Mm -hmm. We're building a massive UK culture right now. This is history in the making. Um, we're just trying to be a part of that history. It's pop up, pop up. Yeah. yeah, the pop up shot that was literally last week, wasn't it? Yeah, last, yeah, last week. week. Yeah. That was sick. So last year we did it, but we didn't really have a gauge on the number of how many we people. Didn't have, we had enough stock either. And, yeah, and we didn't have enough stock either last year. So it was kind of like a trial run like a successful trial run, a very successful one, but this year, I think it was over 150,000 people saw the Snapchat filter, I think about a thousand and something people used it, um, we had the shop packed from Monday to Sunday, Sunday yeah. and the people that own Pop Brixton, like they always ask us, how do you keep a shop busy from Monday right through to Sunday, and they have different people in that pop-up container every week, and we're the only ones that do that. Pen and paper, Photoshop, Illustrator. In um, other I can draw as well. You can't draw through. <laughs> I was about to swear, but I can't do it that way. Um, yeah, that's it. Photoshop, Illustrator, Pen and Paper. That's the only tools I use. Yeah. In terms of projects, um, for me personally, um, I think this maroon tracksuit was one of our, one of the ones that I'm always going to remember. Yeah. Always. Um, Three o'clock in the morning. For the three, yeah, we woke up three o'clock in the morning. Three hour well, I was up. Like I had to be up because I sometimes have to wake this guy up. <laughs> so I had to get up extra early. Um, it was an idea that we we kind of just thought, you know what, like last too short. Let's just try it out and see how it goes. And the reactions we got from it was on a different level. So um, for me, it's moving tracks. And even today, I get, um, get people asking me where did it tracks it from. Can I get one? But the formula which we told people like if when Swag London release clothing, just remember like when it's gone, it's gone. Like, we ain't gonna re-release it again. So and people need to realise that. So that's for me, Maroon all day. I ain't even got one. He, he had to sell his one off his back. Yeah. yeah. I just haven't got one. I don't that. <laughs> Personally, I would just say be you, be individual and don't listen to what anyone says. So mm -hmm. even if someone thinks your idea is rubbish. You might as well go for it if you're young. You've got time to waste. You can make mistakes at our age. Mm -hmm. um, you never know where it will lead you. Yeah, and be consistent. Um, I think for a lot, lot of entrepreneurs, um, especially young ones, they, they fail to understand that it takes time and you have to be consistent at what you're doing. So you can't just yeah. decide you want to be doing this venture one day and five days on, down the line someone asks you the same question, how's your venture going out? I moved on to something else. Um, it's not going to happen like that. You have to be always be consistent in what you're doing, and just always remember pain is temporary. Um, 
everything that you've been through in your life, like let's say when you walked around the house, then you banged your foot on the door, like after five minutes, you're not thinking about your foot. So just remember, just be, embrace the journey and just make every test your testimony. So just be consistent in what you're gonna do. And yeah, that's, that's what I would say. You should start walking church. <laughs>